hello hello we are gonna do mega meal prep and bunch of big batch cooking i'm going to do uh the prep before the prep i've bought in this is probably 20 pounds of ground beef i had got on sale a while ago and then i have probably 12 pounds or so of sausage i need this ground beef for one smaller recipe, I guess you can say. One recipe, it needs about four pounds of ground beef tonight, but I'm doing big batch cooking with this, so I have it in the freezer for upcoming meals. Real quick and easy, I'll talk about that upcoming here in the video. Just telling you what we're doing. I'm getting this meat in a big bowl of cold water, doing the cold water defrost method, just to um, get the packaging off and get in the slow cookers etc etc okay let's go you're gonna see so many things woohoo and then we still have several many don't know the exact number we've been using them throughout this year but we still have a lot of our homegrown chickens that we raised and processed. Sorry, I got my pirate hat on. Still morning, gotta do breakfast. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna get this meat prepping for later for us to process it as well. So I'm gonna go downstairs in my uh, homestead meat freezer. Gonna get as many chickens as I can put in this bag that we got for free. Don't worry about the brand names on there. We got this for free at a, a Walmart grocery pickup order at some point. And I'm going to cook those chickens through the, I'm gonna cook those chickens in the electric pressure cookers. I'm gonna get ground beef and ground sausage going in the slow cookers. Just gonna get all my cookers a going. <laughs> and then later this afternoon, we're gonna get into more fun stuff with all this big bulk cooked meat. All right, so I'm gonna go down into my basement vault to get this chicken. And also, just something random I thought to show you. Several of you, um, I believe in videos last summer, I showed our wood stove we had installed in the basement, but then I still get questions about if we ever got it installed. So here it is. We used it this winter. We're not using it now because today's 60 and tomorrow's gonna be like 71. And then the next couple days, you know, weather report gonna be in the 80s. But we did use it this winter. We also have another electric heat source that we used a lot, but we use this as well. And it does, the heat rises and heats the whole house. It's just a matter of we have to come down stairs to fill it and stuff. So sometimes we used it, sometimes we didn't, but I'm sure glad to have it. So these are from a batch we did in September. I just filled my bag up and we'll, we'll get these big batch cooking throughout the day too. And then uh, full disclosure, I found two boxes of Uncrustables to go with our homegrown chicken, haha. -ha. But these Uncrustables were back from when I was in the hospital and we also had some other carrying on during that time. I got, I just did a Walmart order with some easy breezy Sanity Mama stuff. And I thought, I'm gonna set these out today and the kids can have these along with fruit for lunch. So at least for the moment, I've got about 10 pounds of ground beef going in that seven quart slow cooker. Don't have anything going in that one yet. And then this is my 10 quart slow cooker. And boy, I don't know how many pounds I have going in there, but got a whole lot of lot. I'm all wrapped up right now. Someone else is holding Tobin for me. And Benjamin and I, we are gonna go outside and look for frogs in a minute, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I had some more meat I wanna get in this slow cooker and I wanna get some chickens going in the pressure cooker, right? Not cooking our other chickens. I'm not cooking our other chickens. You're not the ones with the feathers that you were holding yesterday, right? These are chickens we, hey Benjamin, he's, he's looking at the sausage curiously. These were chickens that we raised and butchered in the fall. Yeah. And this is just sausage that I got on sale at Sharp Shopper. It's been in the freezer and we need to use it. So I'm putting some sausage and some ground beef in this slow cooker. 
and then I'm gonna get some chickens going in the Instant Pot. I think I might only have room actually for sausage in this one. Thank you. Naomi went and got me some kitchen towels, but we're gonna go outside. We're gonna look for a frog for a little bit, aren't we? Yeah. We are. Buddy. And we're gonna look for Buddy. That's right, I see buddy. the mom. The mom, and what did you say the mom's name is? Kate. Kate. Did you know that Buddy and Bubba, okay. So Benjamin always finds these frogs, Buddy and Bubba, they're brothers, right? Yeah. And sometimes there's Beta, who's a cousin, and what was it, Billy? Bobo. No. We were going with this whole bee theme, except Benjamin decided that their mommy's name is Kate. And then what were we saying that their daddy's name could be? I don't know. It was, this was mommy's idea. I said, well, maybe their dad's name is Frank. Frank. So Kate and Frank have all these boys. No, and just girls. two. Oh, just two, just and, and, and Buddy and Bubba. Girl. And the girls and the rest are cousins? No, that's, that's one cousin. Okay. Then we have a whole one frog one family going. Cousin mm -hmm. is named Basket. Basket? Well, that is a B word. That could be a name. Okay, so we got two, four, six, eight. I got eight pounds of sausage in the slow cooker. I've got another five pounds of ground beef, but it's just not gonna fit in there. Okay, so, yeah, eight pounds of sausage in there. And I use sausage when I have it bulk, big bed cooked here. I use it interchangeably with ground beef or I'll do a mix and I'm just putting it on high for several hours. We've had other ground beef that has been cooking on high and Benjamin's laughing, and so now I'm gonna get some chicken going in the pressure cooker. I have three pressure cookers I could use, but I have three slow cookers going. So I think I'm gonna be kind to my kitchen, because I gotta talk to Travis about um, how many pressure cookers can I plug in in slow cookers at one time? Anyway, he's an electrician, he knows those things, but I'm gonna get one pressure cooker going, is what I'm trying to say for right now. And then later I might get a couple more going as the slow cooker's finished. Or he's gonna tell me when he watches this video, oh, it's no problem, you could've done them all. But what? whatever, let's get chicken going. So I was gonna use the 10 quart Instant Pot to get, I do two chickens in that. Uh, but then I forgot I did a big spaghetti squash in that pressure cooker the other night. I didn't wash it, I left, left the uh, inner pot in. So I've gotta rinse this out real quick and in throw water around and uh, then we'll get the chicken. Also, getting my brain going, I can do a couple chickens each in some stock pots and then peel the meat. Of course, we'll have broth and such from that. So I don't necessarily have to get all three pressure cookers going, but I'll get a couple pots Bye. going too. Got my little helper back. Were you being snuggled? And hiccuping. He comes comes back to me hiccuping. Hiccup. Hiccup. Well, yesterday we got the whole megaton of meat cooked, went ahead and got it packed in the refrigerators. Coming back today, it's actually evening now. Had our busy day, had our things listed on the whiteboard and had several things not listed on the whiteboard. So now it is evening and I'm going to get the chicken peeled off, labeled, put in gallon freezer bags for easy access for upcoming meals where I need my chicken pre-cooked. And actually, I already made up a big pot of chili with some of the ground beef that I bulked cooked. Let's get picking this chicken. Actually, before I pick the chicken, a few little things I gotta do in this kitchen just because it's evening now. Let's do a quick kitchen pickup and then we'll pick this chicken.
So here's my setup and there's the chicken still on the bones that we did those in the stock pot and the pressure cookers and there's bags I've got on the stands and I'm just going to get to chicken picking. <laughs> Sorry, we'll have to have a, a chicken picking shirt or something, huh? Uh, gonna get to chicken picking and then getting those in the bags from there. And then I've got a couple extra cans left over from my mega chili. We worked so hard to get here. We've got tons of school done today. Just got it all done at all. So, and so, I don't know if I told you, you know, I, I try to go back and watch what I think are my own intros and I try to give you an accurate description when I start these videos. Like, you know, sometimes they take on a mind of their own, but I think I was holding my baby and he was, you know, getting fussy, wanted me to take my shirt off, all of that. When I was trying to show you my full setups, I think I might've shown you my slow cookers that were over here. And I think I told you, but I don't think I showed you. I had two large stock pots going with several chickens each. And then I had several chickens in one of my pressure cookers. So I did a total of about 12 chickens. They were various sizes. My second batch that we did in the fall, their weights were just not as fantastic as our first batch. Our first batch, we had several that were like eight, nine pounds or so. In the fall, they were around five pounds. Some maybe a little more, some maybe a little less, but I guess that's kind of average someone's first year doing homegrown chickens, but I was super thrilled with that first batch. Anywho, so we did 12, and then I saved just the stock that was made from boiling the chickens. I didn't add any vegetables or seasonings to it this time, but I thought I'm just gonna freeze that for some good basic stock, because I'm always going through my chicken broth there. Um, and then we got the ground beef, so. Just gonna get to, again, how many times can I say it? Chicken picking. And then I'm also gonna have a bowl for bones. I can just take the bones and freeze them and later do some bone broth with them. Not getting into all that this go round. Just want the chicken pieces. And then bone broth can come later. There you go. Thanks for sticking with me. These are not whole chicken pieces that I'm pulling out. They boiled for so long or they were in the pressure cooker for so long that they're just they're just all falling apart. So hey, there's there's a wishbone for you though. So you probably won't see a perfectly whole chicken in this. It's okay, it is cooked. And then I'm picking off like different parts of the skin because it's not like I roasted it. I mean, I boiled it or I pressure cooked it. So the skin may not look too appealing, but the meat is cooked super and tender. Um, I'm putting a different cartilage, gristle, bones, um, skin. We've got the necks of the turkeys, all of the turkeys, listen to me. I'm thinking turkey neck, necks of the chickens. All of that will make many fantastic bunches of bone broth. So that will be projects for another day, but all of this can be put in the freezer and we'll break that down even more so. Now you can use your big batch cooked chicken in pretty much any chicken casserole recipe that you would like. You can use it for chicken and stir fry. You can do the chicken broccoli rice casseroles, chicken noodle soup, chicken and dumplings, just chicken, chicken, chicken. And it's one of those things that is super helpful to already have cooked. Same thing with ground beef. Now I've been big batch cooking ground beef for a very long time. Back in the olden days when I had three children, they were five, two and a newborn. And I was working with my nursing hours and working with being a new homeschool mom. And when I say nursing hours, working as a charge nurse and nursing a baby, all of those things and working night shift, I was really diving into, and of course, pre tons of internet doing big batch cooking and freezer meals my own way. And with the big batch cooking, one of the first things I started to do on my own is whenever we would come home from our grocery shopping, even if it was for a two week grocery haul, and then not long after that, I started the once a month grocery shopping just as a family of five for convenience so I wouldn't have to run so much. To be home with my children and again, homeschooling, working full time, all that, I didn't wanna take full days to grocery shop very often. But 
with the two week, the bi-weekly grocery shopping that I got into, even, I mean, I was doing that in nursing school. Jaden was three, <laughs> so I was a newborn baby because again, that was easier way back when. But with the big batch cooking, that's where we're going with this story. I did that starting when I had three kids, family five, working, homeschooling, all that, yada, yada, sing it with me. Started batch cooking the ground beef. That's what we're saying. That's what I'm getting out of my mouth. And that was very helpful, super simple. Let's make sure I put my, can I tell a story and put my meat in the right casserole dish here? <laughs> we can do it. It is helpful though to have your ground beef already cooked up because it's less that you have to do if you're making a, a home cooked meal that night. Again, spaghetti, chili, tacos, the, the trio of, of classic family favorites. Whenever you have to go and cook a couple pounds of ground beef, and again, even from way back when, I've always tried to cook enough to get several meals out of it to have leftovers for Travis and I, for us to take to work, for little kids' lunches. So even back in the day, decades ago, I was still batch cooking several pounds of ground beef and using several pounds of ground beef at a time. I mean, several pounds might have been two pounds, uh, where now I would use four or five, but that's never for just one meal. I get many, many meals whenever I cook and make recipes with that much meat. Someone had recently asked why I use so much meat in my recipes, but the thing is, it's never for just one meal, for 12 servings and that's it. I mean, this is for multiple, multiple meals, just like that chili, you know, we had it last night, we had some today with lunch, it will be an option tonight with dinner, and we will finish out that pot of chili at some point tomorrow, now that's not all that there is available, but people are eating it. And just like the cabbage, cabbage roll casseroles I'm gonna do tonight, it'll be tonight, and it'll finish out some meal choices for some folks. It'll probably be gone by tomorrow. Um, if not, it'll be lunch, lunch leftovers the following day, too, as far as choices. Because with lots of people, leftovers are never a problem. And even with not a lot of people, leftovers have never been a problem for us. So yeah, this is just falling apart. Just gotta pull all the bones out here. Yep, there's that wishbone again. It's a fun project to do with kids too. I'll probably have to rinse my hands and help my baby here. Um, or I'm gonna give you a chicken face, right? But if you take like the wishbone, any of these bones, whenever you're processing meat like this and soak them in vinegar, within a few days, they're really soft and rubbery and you can bend them and it's just a neat project to teach them. And there's projects online to go with it, but once in a while we will do that. We will soak some of the bones in vinegar. Again, we will, we'll chop that up. Just trying to get it picked down right now. And also use batch cooked chicken like this for chicken salad. We like to do that. And we'll get maybe two or three lunches out of it, just depending. Oh, Tobin, I hear you. I think you're simmering back down now, huh? Remember, I butcher chickens. <laughs> I've had a lot of kids, and I have that nursing background, so picking this chicken doesn't bother me. Uh, I know it's it would not be everybody's thing, though. So it just is cooked chicken. See, that is a chicken neck. So, again, I'm not gonna, there is meat there, but I think that's better for broths. And that way you have chunks of the meat in your stock that you make as well. Oh, don't bet. You wanna get a hand in here? Mama don't have no hands right now, huh? No, it's not making no notes. Murphy's Law for getting the chicken off your hands, huh? Now I have Daniel looking into the back door. He's probably gonna be sitting up here talking to me about this chicken meat here in a minute. Bunch of the kids are swimming. I need to wash my baby rope tonight. 
It's gonna smell like chicken. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Okay. Come on through. Come I'm on through. taking a part of chicken. Daniel is having some fun with the chicken bones. Hey, look what I need. Isn't that so cool? That's cool. Can I build with chicken bones? <laughs> Country part, kids. Yes, country honey, I can give you some bones. So I took a nick, uh, uh, a nick, yeah, took a break, nursed my baby for a good 30 minutes, got him changed, got him in his little vibrating chair seat thingy. And uh, we haven't even unpacked the baby swing yet. We have a new one we had bought this time. I was thinking the other day, well, we could get that out too, but he's enjoying his little seat just for a change of scenery, not up in mama's armpit for a something different. Now I did my chicken in gallon bags. You can also do them in quart bag. My friend Ashley Bufa and I, she's from Freedom Moms, she recently did a talk for my Large Family Table membership about big batch cooking. And for her family, and she's got 10 kids, she does the meat in quart bags because she prepares a lot of meals for that night, the meal for that night, and doesn't expect necessarily to get multiple meals over many days out of it. So you can bag it up any way that you would like in any size bag, however you think it'll best fit your family and your meals. I know like if I'm doing chicken salad, it's going to be one of these bags. Or if I'm doing chicken noodle soup, it's going to be one of these bags. Or if I'm doing a chicken stir fry or fried rice, it's going to be one of these bags. So it'll be nice to have the chicken already cooked up. And of course, the broth, since it was in the refrigerator and has sat up, is super thick now. Doesn't matter. We can still get it out and get it into these freezer bags. And drop the spoon down. Oh, yes, I'm doing it. Okay. Yay. Okay, and then for uh, for normal people, <laughs> you can also put your broth here. Let me just, there you go. Who needs a tripod? We got a countertop. <laughs> anyway, you can put your broth in a quart size bags. Much more sensible. Of course, I've got several gallon size bags over here that I'm gonna show you. And know that whenever I defrost a bag, I'm doing a lot of cooking because that's who I am. Okay, so here is my broth in bags. I'm gonna get a second small sheet pan here to put this third bag of broth and this smaller bag of broth on. What I will do is flash freeze them on the pans and then I'll be able to take the bags off and just file them away in the freezer. If I was just going to put these bags on the rack in the freezer, it's gonna freeze to the rack. So word to the wise, only cause been there, done that, flash freeze on a sheet pan first. Oh, and some viewers have also given tips over the years such as you can use cardboard. I mean, you can just flash freeze on anything so it doesn't have to be a sheet pan.
nothing to see here, folks. Again, nothing to see. Okay, so now I'm going to label my bags for the ground beef and sausage. Thank you so much friends for doing all of that super mega big batch cooking with me. We cooked all that chicken and all that ground beef and all that broth. Got it all into the freezer for upcoming meals. Be sure to click the first link in the description and also look, I'll put it in the pinned comment. You can still sign up for my super mega family food collection where you get a freezer meal planner, you get a wonderful holiday and family events planner, you get free mommy and me baking printables, and you get my family favorites recipe binder creation kit you get a whole lot it's over a 59 dollars value so again you can still sign up and get that for free and i will see you very soon with another brand new video i'm actually getting ready to film a bunch of haul bunch of haul videos coming up for you real soon bye bye